What are superplasticizers? High-range water reducers, commonly referred to as superplasticizers, are an additive used in the production of high-strength concrete. Chemicals known as plasticizers allow for concrete with a water content of 15% or less. Superplasticizers permit 30% or more reductions in water content. It is chemical mixings that are added to the concrete to develop its flowing capacity, they assist to minimize the quantity of water in the concrete and enhancing the durability and strength of concrete. In this way, the water content can be reduced without affecting the material's usability. Types of Superplasticizers Sulfonated Melamine, Formaldehyde Condensates, SME Sulfonated melamine formaldehyde condensates are normally preferred superplasticizers within the precast concrete domain because they do not diffuse the cement setting. Sulfonated naphthalene formaldehyde condensates (SNF). Sulfonated naphthalene formaldehyde is a high-scale water reducer superplasticizer. Modified lignosulfonates (MLS). Lignosulfonates are water-solvable anionic polyelectrolyte polymers. They are derivatives of wood pulp utilizing sulfite pulping. Special considerations for high-strength materials. Concrete loses its workability quickly when a superplasticizer is employed. Because of this, high-strength concrete containing such ingredients must be carried, poured, and finished as soon as possible to preserve its usability. When using ready-mixed concrete delivery trucks over extended distances, the workability of current superplasticizers can be maintained for up to 100 minutes. Some superplasticizers are blended during batching while others are put on site before pouring to minimize drastic slump reduction and trouble in placing. High-strength concrete should be produced and inspected in the same manner as normal-strength concrete. For high-strength concrete, careful control over material quality and the production and execution processes cannot be overemphasized. Control of production should involve not only proper batching and mixing of components but also regular examination and checking of production equipment, such as weighing and measuring equipment, mixers, as well as control devices. This level of oversight should be extended to the conditions of transport and delivery when it comes to the provision of ready-mixed concrete. Placing, compaction, curing, and surface finishing are the four primary methods for on-site quality control. High-strength concrete with high workability requires more compaction than conventional strength concrete with the same slump, according to the on-site experience. The quicker the loss of workability, the more important it is to accomplish the job as soon as possible. To prevent plastic shrinkage, water-retaining curing chemicals must be applied to the final concrete surface as soon as possible. Superplasticizers in practice. The interface between superplasticizers and cement is a surface phenomenon. Electrical charges are determined by the surface mineralogy of cement fragments, with interstitial phases enriched in positive sites and silicate phases depleted. To explain the possible effects of changes in the surface structure of cement grains, various concepts are illustrated in this section. The hypothetical cement particles have the same interstitial phase slash silicate phase ratio. However, their water and superplasticizer exposed surfaces are vastly different, C3S for G1, C3A and C4AF for G2, C3S and a small amount of interstitial phase for G3, etc. Initial reactivity, the rate at which new surfaces emerge, and the affinity that superplasticizers can have for these surfaces are both strongly affected by this. Because of this, the performance of various admixtures will vary greatly depending on the situation. The variations between types of cement will be smaller than in these severe cases. In the early phases of cement hydration, surface rather than mass mineralogy influences superplasticizer cement interactions. What matters is whether or not the surface mineral composition is consistent with the bulk. This is to be expected if cracks do not deflect significantly at grain boundaries during grinding. These deflections aren't important, according to recent numerical modeling results for this process. As a result, the surface composition can be roughly approximated using bulk composition. Waste for aggregates in ultra-high performance concrete (UHPC). Self-compacting UHPC is a feature of the technology. Concrete's compressive strength and porosity are both improved by SP additives, Galazewski and Swabowski, 2004. This sort of concrete necessitates a large amount of SP additives. Water usage can be lowered by 20% to 40% while still maintaining workability thanks to SP. 
One of the most significant SPs is polycarboxylate, PC. As a result, the hydration of cement is improved, Mazanik et al., 2010. Water consumption can be reduced by up to 40% when this addition is used at a concentration of 0.15 to 0.30% of the cement weight. As well as controlling the setup time, SPs can also be utilized to boost initial and final strength. Several researchers have examined the impact of UHPC qualities on SP type and design technique when SP is gradually added, better performance and increased flowability are observed. There is no substantial impact on the ultimate strength of the UHPC from the different SP kinds, SP1 is a polymethacrylic acid-based polymer with a medium sidechain length, and SP2 is a polyacrylic acid-based polymer with a medium sidechain length. Biopolymers with superplasticizer properties for concrete Biopolymers for concrete that have high levels of superplasticizer. There is a natural propensity to utilize biopolymers in groups rather than alone because multiple qualities of the concrete can be simultaneously improved. Traditional polymers will run out soon, however, biopolymer sources are almost endless. This means that these materials should be used in higher amounts in the near future. How readily accessible is petroleum on our planet? Berga, 2009, estimates that oil will be available for another 41 years. For the next four decades or so, civilization can continue to use petroleum-based superplasticizers, thanks to new research. Even yet, it's only a little period of time. How many biopolymers are there on the planet? Because they are recycling some of their materials, the solution to this question is unknown. Why are some of these materials being recycled in this way? In part, this is due to the fact that the Earth is not yet capable of sustaining such a restoration, and this complete potential rests solely on the species Homo sapiens. I hope this video provides you with a sound understanding of superplasticizers in concrete. Please feel free to like, share and comment.